Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for September 19th, 2020 to order. The time is now 9.01 a.m. We are still doing these meetings remotely in response to COVID and Governor Wolf's stay at home order and uh, emergency declaration. Uh, we normally do the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, but due to the, the telepresence nature, it gets a little complicated. So we're, we're gonna omit that for the time being. At this time, we'll open up the floor to public comments. Uh, Sue, did we receive any public comments via email? There were no emails and no phone calls. Okay. Uh, we have one participant from the community on the call. Uh, Dan, do you have any comments that you'd like to make? No, I do not. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into the items for discussion. The first item is the emergency declaration. Uh, we, in similar fashion to the state, made an emergency declaration back in March. That stays in effect until uh, revoked by the supervisors. On August 31st, Governor Wolf extended his COVID-19 emergency order another 90 days. So we will be able to do remote meetings like this one for the next 90 days after the August 31st date. Um, I suggest, as always, that we don't take any further action until we are either confident that the, the immediate risk has cleared or that the uh, emergency order at the state level has been rescinded. Next item on the agenda is the Good Sound Company uh, for 38 Main Street. Mr. Wilmer Good has purchased Reed's Church. Uh, he plans to remove an existing shed and building, uh, excuse me, an existing shed and to build an addition on the back. Uh, it's gonna be office space, storage, restrooms, and a garage. The congregation for that church will hold their church services there on Sundays for the next four years. His business will be operating during the week. Uh, in relation to that, construction and the changes, he is requesting two waivers. Uh, the first one is the Saldo Section 3 uh, subdivision of a land development plan uh, based on the following. The project is located on an existing lot of record. No subdivision is proposed. Pro uh, the project proposes the reuse of an existing building, uh, has a low intensity and only two employees. The zoning variance of building setbacks has already been obtained and the site plan has been provided to the township for review. They're also requesting a waiver on the stormwater management ordinance. The project will not increase the impervious area. Uh, the existing shed will be removed and the existing parking area will be reconfigured so that it eliminates impervious area to compensate for the building of the addition. Uh, the site plan was also provided to the township engineer for verification. Uh, McCarthy Engineering has gotten a chance to review the sketch plan and waiver requests uh, as did the planning commission. Uh, that was at the 9-15-2020 Planning Commission meeting. Both recommended that the waivers be granted under the following conditions. Condition one, applicant shall submit a site plan for township review as part of the building permit. Condition two, the site plan shall contain sufficient information to ascertain whether the proposed impervious cover will be at or below the existing conditions of the impervious cover. The site, uh, condition three, the site plan shall show sufficient elevations and grading to determine that surface water runoff will not be concentrated or increased to any adjoining property. Condition four, the site plan will contain a calculation for the required number of parking spaces and delineate the location of all proposed parking and loading spaces. All of those seem pretty straightforward and common sense to me. We just have to essentially on Thursday night discuss a little further with Irene present and make a decision whether we approve it or not. Um, the, the long story short of that, because it's, it was a, a lot of, it was a lot of content there in a very short amount of time. They just want to make sure that any of the changes that they make don't result in uh, an adverse condition for any of the, the next neighboring properties. So they don't uh, repave a parking lot and have, uh, have their next door neighbor's basement flood out. So that's, that's really the heart and soul of that, those four points that were handed over by McCarthy. Any initial questions, Jim? No, no. Cool. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the RKL 2019 audit. This has been completed. We are still awaiting the final report, uh, but there were no additional requests for documentation or discovery. So uh, we should be good there. We're just waiting to hear the final report back. RKL's contract also expires the end of the year. Uh, I know Irene was working on getting some additional quotes from other firms for uh, the auditing service going forward. Uh, we'll have to touch base with Irene and see what she has, if she has not already sent them in to Sue. I, I know she was working on that, but I don't know where the end state was. Yeah, I haven't gotten anything. Okay, I'll, I'll send Irene a text probably tomorrow 
Um, Irene is not here today, just for uh, anybody that's curious, it is Rosh Hashanah. So happy Rosh Hashanah to Irene. Um, yes. Next item on the agenda is the pension plan. The audit was done by the uh, Auditor General for the years 2016 through 2019. The final report has been received and we had no issues. There were no findings associated with the, the audit. Yay. Yes, it's done. We, can, we don't have to worry about that for another three years. So. No. <laughs> the, uh, the website, uh, we had a conference call with Civic CMS on August 26th. Uh, we are still hoping to go live for the middle of October. Uh, they are building out the, the structure and the file storage areas for the site. Uh, one of the things that we will have to do uh, as a supervisor team and secretary is to start giving them content to put on the website, lists of officials, things we want to have up there, bios, maps, ordinances, meeting agendas, meeting minutes. Uh, we're going to have to start supplying that over to C Civic CMS. Um, I think one of the easiest ways to do that rather than doing that by email would be to, I'll, I'll make a folder on the Google Drive specifically for CMS, if that's the only thing they'll be able to get into, and we can drop files to them there and say, if you see a file there, put it on the website. So that's my, my personal slant on it. Otherwise, things tend to get cluttered in email with the amount of emails that come and go, and not to mention it just takes up a lot of space in your inbox. So uh, next item is the road projects for 2020. Uh, we had gotten some quotes from Reber and Zerby about uh, doing some overlays on the bad spots. Uh, we need to get a couple more quotes, really, but uh, I'm thinking that may actually not be in our, our best interest. We talked about this last month. It, it's probably going to be better if we just lump that into next year's uh, oil and chip package that Mark McCarthy Engineering is prepared to advertise. So the only thing that we really have to do between now and early January, early February, is to get exact locations and measurements. So that's something that, that I'll work on. I'll probably enlist either Franklin or Butch to go out with me one of these days and specifically mark off and measure how much we're looking for so that it can be put into that bid packet. Uh, on that, that same note, uh, we need to start thinking about the road projects for 2021 as well. So uh, Jim, Sue, Dan, if you're out driving around and you see somewhere that you think would be a good candidate, I'll be doing the same for either uh, a patch or an overlay, or even line painting. If there's somewhere that, that speaks to you, uh, we can't all be everywhere at once. So this is why we, we want to work cohesively as a team and as a community. So if you see something, say something, and we'll make sure that it gets onto the agenda for the, the following year. There's always school road. It's always school road, this is true. School road is a, a, big, a big thing to bite off simply because there's memory serves me there's three more miles of school road that we need to do mm, I, I think so yeah and it's a full depth reclamation and that's i think four hundred thousand dollars per mile and that was mm -hmm. pricing from a couple wow. of years ago which has assuredly mm -hmm. gone up mm -hmm. so that is a major public works project and uh, short of getting miraculous grants or doing it little tiny bits at a time it's it's probably going to have to wait just from a budgetary uh, aspect Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the road crew safety gear. Uh, the road crew does not currently have uh, safety vests or enough safety vests. Uh, they don't have any sweatshirts or helmets or anything like that. Um, we did get some feedback uh, per, I think, Sue, you were kind enough to talk to the road crew as they were coming and going out of the building. Um, right, I got what they want and um, mostly just vests and zippered sweatshirts. And I got sizes for everyone. Good, 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 good. So I'm thinking we can add a couple more things on there, maybe just a couple extra vests and obviously a, a helmet for everybody. We can get that, mm -hmm. that priced out and order together and we can maybe talk about that Thursday night and approve it. The only thing that Butch requested was possibly a baseball hat, a reflective baseball hat, because he wears a hat. Um, Wait, did they have that on them? And if possible, a short sleeve t-shirt. That Those were not included on okay. the paperwork that Irene had. Let me make a note here. I wonder if with the, just throwing ideas at with the short sleeve shirts, I wonder if we could just get some safety yellow, like day glow yellow t-shirts. Yeah. just do like an iron on for like Marion Township that would probably be a little more 
direct than even getting it screen printed somewhere. But we can call around for prices. Yeah, I, I think Dave has a. Sh I know Dave has a short sleeve T-shirt that he got when he was supervisor, and they they got those at Goods, and then Goods actually embroidered his first name on the like above the pocket. Okay. Um, it does not have reflective tape on it, but it's that bright yellow. Okay. I'm just I'm making some notes here, see what we can get. But both are good things, uh, especially with them being out in the sun. A hat's really not a bad idea because mm -hmm. you don't necessarily want to be wearing the helmet during the summer unless mm -hmm. you're doing something that warrants a helmet. Okay, so I think we'll be good there. We'll do a little bit of, uh, let's see, housekeeping on getting the order together and a, a, a total price figured out mm -hmm. in, in advance. They, they all kind of agreed that they don't want to park a for the simple reason that you stated last month, you know, driving in the truck, it's kind of cumbersome. They could yeah. just throw the vest on over their, whatever coat they're wearing, their own coat, and that seemed to be okay with all of them. Yeah, not to mention the, the few, sorry, not to mention the few times that I went out on the road with the, the other Peter. Um, once you're in the truck for a while and the heat's going in the truck, generally you don't want to have to wrestle with a, a big parka necessarily right. because it's, it's relatively warm. Right, um, right. Okay, so next item is the Western Berks Planning Commission. Uh, Irene, Jim, and I were present there. Uh, we discussed the, the plan a little bit, and I, I reviewed really what the, the additions were for Marion Township. Uh, we will be meeting again next month, as they wanted some time to review it further and talk to their engineers and solicitors, which is fine, which is actually prudent and understandable. So uh, we will be there at next month's meeting, once we know the date, to make sure that it is uh, continued to be properly represented. Okay, next up on the agenda is the statewide tax recovery exemption requests. Uh, we've actually received two. Uh, we received a uh, per capita tax uh, request for 2009 and 2010 for a Richard Arbogast, uh, who is deceased. Um, normally when these come through, we will grant them simply because uh, deceased people generally don't pay per capita tax. So uh, we also received a similar request for 2013 and 2014 for a Stephen Dunlop also deceased. Um, so for awareness, I think Thursday night, again, when the three of us are here, and we tend to make motions on a Thursday night rather than a Saturday unless it's simple housekeeping, um, those will be easy ones that we can very quickly go through. Okay. Next is the notice of estimated liquid fuels for next year. The turn back allocation is estimated to be $90,841.85. This amount is based on a mileage of 20.5 and a population of 1,688. Uh, so that 90,000 will be one of the, the big contributing factors to us being able to do road work next year amongst a select handful of other things that we do with that particular fund. Okay, next is the PSATS Unemployment Compensation Group Trust. Uh, we have a, a ballot for the election of the trustees. Um, there's really not a lot of choices there. It's, uh, there's two people on the ballot and you have to vote for two. So it's not a, not a terribly hard decision. Um, so we'll make the, the motion on, on Thursday night to, to approve that. There's actually three of those. There's the Unemployment Compensation Group Trust, the Health Insurance Cooperative Trust, and the Municipals Pension Trust. Um, all three are the same. It's, it's two gentlemen who are the, the only candidates and you have to vote for two. Okay. Next is the resignation of Majority Inspector Poll Worker, Betty Wessner. Uh, she has resigned from this position after uh, more than 40 years in service. Uh, I believe that we should send her a letter, just like we did Rita. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sue, I would say the, probably the same flavor of letter, if not the same letter, and we can change a couple of things on it, would be, would be suitable, because you did write a very nice letter for the, the other okay. individual who retired after 40 so, years And by service. the way, I signed your name. Oh, that's, that's I, Irene fine. wanted to sign it, so I changed the wording a little bit and put all three signatures, and no, I fine. just signed your name. That's fine. Just that kind of a level. Yeah. Yeah, no, no objection here. Okay. The next is the Bethel Marion Topahawken Open Space Plan. Uh, the project has completed. 
Uh, so we should be getting the, the final report on that and the actual, like a full copy of the plan sometime in the very immediate future. We um, have those on, there's some on the desk. Um, oh, okay, so they, they came were dropped in. dropped off. Fantastic, then we, we already have them. Yeah, and I did contact Christy, um, the Topahawk and Township Secretary, to ask if there's anything we still owe and she responded, no, we don't know anything. That was all paid. I was going to say, we paid by installment a while ago, yeah, so but, we should be good. Yeah, but apparently <laughs> the, the chairman of the Open Space Committee wants all the township supervisors to approve that last bill. Okay, that's understandable. Yeah. Project closeout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Silly question, do we have a digital copy of that plan or did they drop off only a hard copy? There's actually hard copy, spiral bound, and a disc. Oh, okay, awesome. So I'll have to grab the, the disc off, off you at some point this week. Um, that way I can get it up on like the, the Google Drive and then yeah. circulate it so that we can all, all read it. I've seen the draft yeah. copies, but I've not seen the completed. Um, based on what I've seen so far, I don't have any objections to paying the final bill. It's, it was a group effort between the three municipalities. Mm -hmm. So... We'll talk about that more in action on it on Thursday night. Uh, but as Sue indicated, uh, Tulpahawken Township and the chairman for the Open Space Committee uh, want the other municipalities to all okay the final payment. Okay. The next item is the Tulpahawken Township Police. Uh, the rate will be increasing as per kind of the normal. And there's a, a number of reasons that contribute to that just general year-over-year -year costs increase. We see it as people, we see it as municipalities. Uh, fuel costs, maintenance on vehicles, wage increases, insurance. Uh, they've also purchased three body cameras and uh, in result of that the, the overall rate is rising four percent. It's going from uh, hold on the annual rate for 2020 is $50,154.30 or $4,179.50 a month. Uh, it will be going up to $52,160.40 or $4,346.71 per month. So increase, but nothing world shaking. And then, like I said, it is within the scope of the agreement that we have with them. Next item is the National Night Out for 2020. The Tulpahawken Police and Bethel Township Police will be holding a National Night Out at the Mount Etna Fire Company grounds on Tuesday, October 6th, 2020, uh, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. There will be food, games, and prizes for all to enjoy. Next is uh, John Seleski as the Emergency Management Coordinator. This was officially approved by the state for, by Governor Tom Wolf. So John is officially our Emergency Management Coordinator for Marion Township. So congratulations, John. Yes. Next is the free shredding event. This is sponsored by Representative Barry Joswiak, Thompson's Vist Bank, and Wiggins Shredding. It will be held on Saturday, October 10th, 2020, from 9 a.m. to noon at Representative Joswiak's district office in Reading at the regional airport, uh, 2501 Burnville Road, Reading, PA. Uh, up to four boxes of shreddable items are permitted. Next is the Berks County Solid Waste Authority Household Hazardous Waste Collection. This is going to be held on Saturday, October 24th and Sunday, October 25th at the Berks County Agricultural Center, Center from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Registration is mandatory. So if you are interested in uh, disposing of any hazardous waste, uh, chemicals, paints, etc., cetera, the, the event is, uh, is there, but you have to register ahead of time. And I'll make sure that we have uh, for Thursday night, the, there's a, a website link that they have provided. I'll make sure that that's in the chat as well as being attached to the YouTube video once it's posted there. Uh, as a side note, the Berks County Solid Waste Authority's paper shredding event was canceled due to COVID-19. Uh, so that one will not be happening, but the free shredding event, as mentioned before, at the Reading Regional Air, uh, Airport is still on. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the trick-or-treat night. 
uh, date and time needs to be set and we need to advertise this. Uh, last year we advertised in the Reading Eagle and the Myerstown Merchandiser Community Calendar uh, for October 31st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Womelsdorf has set theirs as October 31st from 6, uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., rain or shine. Um, I'm inclined to go along with that for a couple of reasons. One, I like having Halloween on Halloween, personally. Uh, it's a Saturday this year, which makes it even easier. And even in respect to COVID, it's the only holiday that we have that encourages people to walk around in masks. So I think that's probably going to be an okay thing, but we can talk about that more on Thursday night. Next item is the Animal Rescue League 2021 contract. Uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to read that over, read it over. Uh, we did not previously contract with Animal Rescue League. It was largely a cost factor, but they have a number of other options available this year uh, in varying costs per capita, ranging from, I believe it was like 50 cents per capita to two or three dollars per capita for certain services. Um, right now, it's a situation where there, if there is an emergency or a situation of animal abuse, the, the ARL will come out in action on it. Uh, people can still surrender animals to the ARL. It's at their cost rather than at the township's cost. And uh, we do have a certain semblance of coverage about stray dogs from the, the state dog catcher through the state police. So we're not completely devoid of coverage, uh, but depending on what our feelings are on certain things, we may be able to supplement that at a, whatever rate we feel is acceptable. And just for Jim and Irene's information, um, I went back in the minutes. So apparently um, in 2018, we were still making a $500 donation. And then in, that's, that's when they changed their policy to be charging for everything. And if I remember correctly, I didn't put it in the minutes, but if I remember correctly, that year or the year before, they only took four dogs. I want to say it was like seven when I looked. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, I've actually, I, I, make, I make, may be quoting the wrong thing. It might have been four dogs, but I remember seeing seven like re requests for service. So it might have been a couple of situations where people had stray cats or anything like that. Um, but when, when we sat down and figured it out, it would have been roughly $3,200 per year for the, the ARL they, contract. They charge... It was $2 per capita for 1,600 people. They charge... Um, like a sheltering fee. I mean, if you read the letter, it, it's like a bunch of fees, you know, plus that per capita fee. And it was just an outrageous amount of money. Yeah, that it broke and, down to a, an obscene amount of money per, per thing that we use, which is why we opted not to go with it. As right, as right. There are some other avenues, maybe not as, as neat and tidy as having somebody come out and pick something up for you. But right. you, you would have protection from like stray dogs if there's a problem there. Uh, you could still take animals, and again, it would be as, as you as a, a citizen rather than the municipality dealing with it, but you do have the option of, of making sure that there's, there's some outlet or option for, for a problem. Right. Okay. Next up is the 2020 Volunteer Fire Relief Association. Uh, we will be receiving the funds by direct deposit for 20, uh, 2020. One, I believe it was September 22nd, so like Monday or Tuesday, whichever day of the week that is. Yeah. And this is just okay. that money that comes, they used to, they used to mail us a check and we would just hand the check over to the fire company, mm -hmm. but then the state changed their way they do things and now they direct deposit it and we're yeah. required to write out a check for the Marion Fire Company Relief Association, not the fire company, it's the Relief Association, uh, within 60 days of deposit of that check. So it, also, it's still an in and out check, but you know we have to be cognizant of the time. And then we have to complete that form too. It says 706B. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I, I, Peter Wallace did that before. I have no idea what's involved in that. So. It's okay. Irene and I can look at it. Okay. That's fine. We'll take care of it. Uh, Dan, if you're, yeah. if we've got overlap in schedule, you're, you're more than welcome to look at it. It's probably going to be your, your standard sort of uh, financial reporting form of oh, essentially okay. the, the in and out on it. Yeah. Um, but it might be a good opportunity to get familiar with a lot of the, the bureaucratic process. Next up is the Womelsdorf Sewer Authority letter. Uh, we received a uh, letter from John Neuer uh, regarding John F. Martin. They will be purchasing an additional 140 
uh, EDUs of Womelsdorf's available 240 EDUs, uh, which, as we had talked about last week, and it makes a good segue into Act 537, it does add another dimension of concern on our part that we could be, even if we got in on those 100 EDUs, uh, we could be faced with a situation where we either don't have enough capacity or Wommelsdorf is forced to upgrade or increase capacity, which could increase costs. Um, we also have a situation where, depending on between now and if the sewer goes in, we could not have enough EDU space in Wommelsdorf. So the, the entire linchpin of the plan of connecting to Wommelsdorf may not be a viable option. Uh, so that's something that I've been having some side conversations with Jim McCarthy about, and, and we plan on adding to the, the letter, the memo that we're sending to the Department of Environmental Protection, the DEP, uh, detailing that as some of our concerns and really why we want to try to change the plan in the fashion that we want to change the plan. Any questions, Jim? Okay. In that case, that's the last item on the agenda. I'll move into the, the comments. Uh, we did have a, a number of street signs that were stolen. And uh, I believe, Sue, that was you that was looking around on PSATs and there were some su suggestions in the forums. There uh, was, and I was <laughs> pleasantly <laughs> um, surprised that we're not the only municipality who has street signs stolen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that happens pretty much everywhere that there's people in street signs. But yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> Some of the options that people outlined were uh, varied from greasing the poles um, to uh, getting security hardware bolts or bending the bolt threads. Um, and think, the one even said that the grease that they got, the secretary didn't know what kind of grease it was, but it had some kind of a stain in it that stained hands and clothing. So um, that might be worth looking into. Um, my, <laughs> I don't my, know. Co my concern is collateral damage on that. If somebody's out walking and <laughs> touches the pole, that could <laughs> True. be... Um, Likewise, with the, the bending the threads on the bolt, that's good for to keep people from stealing it, but it also makes it nigh on impossible for us to replace the sign if right. we have to replace the sign. Um, I kind of like the idea of the security hardware. If we can look into the, the security hardware, it would be very, very difficult for people to get it off unless they have that specialized tool. That might be the best option simply because it minimizes the, uh, like I said, the collateral damage that you may have from just people walking by it um, or to ourselves if we have to do any kind of maintenance. Mm -hmm. Um, the next item that I have for comments is the John Deere tractor. Uh, the front tire was patched, but uh, actually just if I can rewind slightly, we had an issue with the one front tire while Butch was out mowing uh, where it had a flat. It, it has been patched, so it's holding air for the time being, but the two tires on the front really should be replaced. Um, Butch was kind enough to get three uh, telephone quotes for having both front tires replaced. Uh, Zimmerman Farm Services uh, gave us uh, a quote, Binkley and Hearst gave us a quote, and Custom Exhaust gave us a quote. Custom Exhaust came in at the lowest, so we don't have to take any action now, but I think we should uh, move on that uh, on Thursday night, simply because we do also use the Don Deere tractor for plowing over the winter. Mm -hmm. If we have some snow, it would be good to have nice fresh tires on that rather than something that would potentially uh, either wear out and pop if they're as they're start, probably starting to get low uh, or just simply get flat again while he's out plowing because it's probably going to be a situation where it's stuck if it's out in the snow and it gets a flat. Mm -hmm. He did tell me that he did not contact Kepley Science. Okay, that might not be a bad idea to give them a call. I'll make a note to ask Butch to get them. A fourth quote never hurts. And uh, uh, as always, if we can keep business local, I like to keep business local. Right. And Zimmerman, I believe, is out on 501. Yep. Um, Remembering mistaken. Uh, like, custom one of them, e custom exhaust is, is nearby too, isn't it? That's. I think that's up on 422 in Myerstown. Um, yeah. And one of them, he said, will come to the township building um, but I don't remember which one he said Okay. to, to I'll, replace I'll, the tires, but I'll call Butch. I'll ask him to, I'll ask him for specifics on that. Yeah. And ask him to call Kepley's too. And they're thankfully below the threshold where you don't actually need the written Tel telephony is fine. Right. Um, he did tell me here, um, the mounting from Zimmerman would be 85 and the mounting for custom exhaust would be 60. He didn't get a mounting price for 
they clean first. Okay. Well, that actually that still that still puts custom exhaust as the the lowest. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I'll cover very briefly Irene's two points that she had on the agenda. I'll let her take more of that on Thursday night, but uh, we're looking to have uh, Dan Klein, who is our assistant treasurer, uh, help out more around the office. The description, the state level description of assistant treasurer does permit uh, additional secretarial related work. So we, assuming Dan is willing, and I think uh, we've, we've both talked to Dan about this and he is willing to come in, uh, we could have him come in and help you do some stuff Sue, so, so that you'd be able to focus on things that you want to focus on, whether it's filing or uh, what have you. Maybe Dan could help you put the minutes together right after a meeting, and then you can you can proof them and approve them. We'll work out the the interplay on that, but we might be able to get you an extra set of hands around the office so that you're you're a little less uh, overloaded. That'd be great. Uh, the other thing is uh, we have received some complaints about Eagle Disposal Service. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll let Irene expound more on that. Uh, we are still in contract with Eagle, I think, for another year after this year, because it's a three-year. I thought it was a five-year contract, but I looked. It's a three-year contract. A, I say, if memory serves me, it's a three, and we have the option to renew for two after that. It was the same Correct. thing that we had with Republic. Yeah. Right. Um, so we are in year two out of three or two out of five, depending on how we look at it. Um, I'm thinking we should continue to try to work, uh, for obvious reasons, continue to work with Eagle on getting them to... Uh, adjust their their behavior or maybe their habits or driver habits in certain places. Um, so now, one thing I don't remember if I emailed you. I think I was going to email you and then I got sidetracked and I never did. Um, but um, the sales rep was in for Eagle was in the office last week and he um, asked if the supervisors would how the super what the supervisors would feel about them providing toters for recycling and trash that have that little bar in the front so the garbage truck can just hook it or I don't know so, if they have a, like a grapple hook or whatever, um, you know, flip it over the truck. However, if they provide us recycling and trash toters, when the contract is up, if we go with another company, they take those. Are they talking about providing them for free? Yes. That's actually interesting because that was one of the components of what we had asked about the first time and they were exactly. absorbently expensive. So exactly. if they're willing to do I it for free, I'd, I'd actually be potentially interested in that. But the um, only thing is then, you know, once their contract is up and if we back. don't go with them again, those go away, you know, yeah. they take them back. Yeah. Um, but he did say that they, they have a really hard time keeping good help. Okay. I'm, it's it's like that everywhere. It's hard to find good help no matter where you are. So I yeah. completely understand yeah. that statement. But we do have to to make sure that because they are we are paying them, um, right. that we have a certain baseline of service that we're not having trash strewn in places or people aren't having like I know I know why they do it sometimes, but having the recycling thrown in with the trash, um, and just for for the record, um, anytime they do that, they do notify us, and it's a situation where they sift the recycling out after taking it back and it's usually because they had a, a truck that was either double booked or they had an issue with the truck and the recycling truck would not be able to come out that particular day so it's not like it gets thrown in a landfill it doesn't we get the reports around the the tonnage for both trash and recycling it's just it's uh it looks kind of funny for homeowners when they're throwing both things into the same truck okay that's uh that's all that i had and what was on irene's agenda uh, jim do you have any comments no, sir. Okay. Sue, do you have any comments? Um, just that I need to RSVP for the Berks County Convention. Um, I, I mean, it can wait until after the board meeting, but then I need to do it. So I need to know who's going or who's not going. I don't believe that I'll be able to be in attendance. So you can okay. kind of mark me down as a no. Um, Jim, if you want to attend, let Sue know either before or on Thursday. Um, and refresh my memory, Sue. That was available to supervisors it, and it's, the treasurer um, and secretary, treasurer, supervisors, elected auditors, and tax collector. Okay. Um, I did email Shirley and about um, our EMC going, and she said yes because it's outside. Um, you know, he can go. Um, so that, then the other question is: Would you mind contacting Bob and? 
I think I have Tommy White's phone number and Harold Nambeck's phone number. Um, so I can contact them. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can email Bob. Um, okay. I mean, he, he hasn't expressed an interest in the past, but he still should be invited. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll, what was uh, the cost? What was the cost for spouses? Was like, was like $11, um, so for the chicken dinner, what they're it? what they're doing is a chicken dinner. No, wait, let me see here. Mm. There'll be no breakout session this year for tax collectors. Normally, um, um, Normally I think it's part of the meeting. The tax collector would kind of go in a different room and have their own little discussion. Um, Everyone will receive a chicken barbecue dinner, which includes a half a chicken, baked potato, pepper, cabbage, applesauce roll, and a drink uh, in a takeout container. You can eat it there. You can take it home. Extra chicken barbecue dinners can be purchased at eleven dollars, but they need to know so they can order them. Um, and she did tell me that also this year, because it's outside, you can take your spouse if you'd like to. They don't normally allow spouses to attend the meeting because it is a it is a formal um, meeting. Um, but anyway, anything else, Sue? That's all. Okay, fantastic. In that case, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The not, time is now nine thirty-seven a.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Me meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. It was nice uh, seeing you, and we'll we'll talk again on Thursday, if not sooner. Yes. Okay. See you Thursday. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. Take care, you everyone. Too. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.